three, two, one. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Slightly Buzz. We're here on a Wednesday evening. Yes, sir. Getting some content out for y'all. How we doing today, boys? We're doing good, man. It's been a good day. I'm uh, I'm excited for this episode. I've been uh, ready. I've been itching to shoot, boys. I've been itching to shoot again. So I'm I'm glad we're back in the freaking working station. Let's get her done. So, yeah, dude. I feel like we've got a decent lot to talk about today. It's gonna be a good episode. Got a good beer. Got a good, some good topics. I'm I'm all about it. Yeah, we uh we did some research into how to actually review a beer. So that's been fun. So hopefully, that's it's a little new for you guys. I mean, we're professionals at this, but we're also semi-professionals at semi-pros this. Semi-pros at the very So we're, we're trying to take it up a notch, and um, yeah, look Always forward working it. on our craft, okay? Honing in the craft of drinking beer. It's like anything else but 12-ounce curls. Just practice makes perfect, baby. Kyle, how's your day, Ben? It's been a good day. Feeling good, well-rested, ready to go. I'm excited for today. Yeah. This guy gets it. It's fair. Nick? Ones and twos, all about it. You doing anything fun today? Work, um, not not so much. Uh, made made a funny Snapchat video earlier. That was pretty cool. Kind of like the highlight of my day, if I had to say. So didn't get that. No, it's on the story, bro. It's for everybody. Oh, yeah, it was pretty funny. Yeah, if you haven't watched episode eight, check her out. The Ocho, dude. ESPN The Ocho was nuts. Like it's elite as a station. It was just the craziest of games you could imagine. Bro, they had marble racing. They had hand. Okay, whoa. Mar- marble racing? Dope. Underrated sport. The very beginning of quarantine when everything got shut down, like a weekend, I watched a lot of marble racing. There was live betting on it. Kyle is so rattled no, right I now. I thought that was just a joke in the Dodgeball movie. I didn't know there was really an Easter Oh, dude, they aired the Ocho, oh, like, what? It's When do they do it? They From, like, 2000. But like seven to two thousand thirteen. There's like specific times of the year where they like run events on the Ocho, and it's yeah. all like really weird like sporting events. Yeah, they brought it back this year for a couple episodes of different things. Yeah, it was like back in the fall. Yeah, in the fall they did that again this year. Yeah, but I feel yeah, like cornhole would be the ultimate. There was there was sport. cornhole. There was darts. There was like water polo. There was. I remember a belly flop competition on there. Yeah, see, that's the kind, of, uh, that's the entertainment I'm looking to see right there. Yeah, it was, it was dope. Dude. We need the Ocho year round. We're starting a petition, slightly buzz podcast. Bring the Ocho full time. I'm so about it, dude. I think they also had like the log splitting competitions on there. Dude, we got to get you on that. Oh I, dude, those are some big boys. <laughs> 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 Damn. Nah, bro. I've yeah. seen you split a log before. You're kind of like a one-two chop kind of guy. Oh yeah, dude. All day, Easy. every day. A yeah, pine, I love not maple, wood, dude. Pine. pine. I love splitting wood. You can split. You can split a pine log like that, no problem. But you get a maple, it's it's a couple of hacks. Maple, you got to work your way around the knots on the top. That's major key. Tim's like chopping you just get a hydraulic knot, press you're done-zo. it down. You're absolutely done, though. But oh, dude. Nothing's worse than when it takes like 25 minutes to get your chainsaw, chainsaw started. You're just sitting there for like 15 minutes straight because you haven't used just it in a year. The same. Like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then one time it's like, blah, blah. and you're like, oh, let's go. And then it still takes like five more minutes, but you know you're there. Yeah. <sighs> Top scene all the way around. Yeah. So we've got ourselves an episode today here, boys. Kyle, why don't you tell the people what we're drinking? Yeah. Ooh, we got from Griffin Claw Brewing Company there, El Rojo. Oh, nice. El Rojo. That's actually very fitting An considering Espanol? Cinco de Mayo right around the corner. Yeah. Hey, just a little preview for for the next episode. We're, we're definitely going to be doing a little Cinco de Mayo celebration. So get your beer steins ready and your shot glasses good and clean. And if you got uh, a sombrero, don't forget to put it on. Oh, yeah. We're going to have some fun on the next one. It might be a little more than slightly buzzed, if you know what I'm saying. We're going to go from slightly buzzed to absolutely hammered. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, why don't At you- least me, anyway. Why don't you guys pull those out, and I'll tell you a little bit about this beer. This bronze medal winning El Rojo Red Ale has a malty roasted flavor profile. Entered in competition as an English oh, brown. Oh, yeah, reach for it. The El Rojo is rarely, I'm sorry, is really more of an American red. Bigger than Scottish reds with a beautiful ruby red color and a rich, roasty caramel body. See, I'm excited for this because uh, mm. I uh, red ale, right? American amber. Not I, American Amber. It is. 100% American Amber. I think it's just a red ale. It's American Amber red ale. That's not a thing, dude. Bro, 
I'm telling you. Okay, boys, it's El Rojo Red Ale. Bang! See, it's red ale, but it's also classified as an American amber. It was entered in a competition as an English brown, but they That's say weird. it's more of an American red, so I feel like Tim's taking this one home. Amber is a type of beer, and red ale is a type of beer. Listen, awesome Don't bang. get it twisted. I was doing some research, and they were like, American amber slash red ale. Don't believe I was like, that sounds amazing. All right. Don't believe everything you read on the internet, kids. Well, okay. that might hold true. Nonetheless, <laughs> I'm all about it because what I was going to say is I like ambers a lot. So being that it's a red ale, not okay, apparently it's not an amber, okay, whatever. I, uh, I think it's going to fall pretty much along oh, no. those lines, oh, no. Guess which what should I be found. really good. Guess what? what I just found. American amber slash red ale. Yeah. No! <laughs> so uh, what do you say we chalk that up? To a, a tie. tie. It's a tie. <laughs> to a tie. I hate ties. <laughs> like I said, bro. Especially wearing them. Uh-huh. Yeah, kid. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> no, but uh, dude, yeah, I'm stoked about this. I like yeah. amber's a lot, so this should be kind of ra- should be like a happy medium in a lot of ways. Yeah, I'm stoked for it. Um, when I was bartending, we sold a lot of these. Never had it on draft, but always had cans in stock. I don't think I ever had any of it, but they were pretty popular with like the 20 set, like with the grad school population. A lot of them were getting these El Rojos. Yeah. Yeah, dude, Griffin Claw is also, like, a really nice up-and-coming brewery, too. I mean, they're definitely established, but they're uh, really starting to, like, distribute their their goods quite a bit <laughs> these days. Like, I've been seeing them pop up left and right in a lot of different areas. So, not something that you used to see a lot, but definitely yeah. definitely spurting up here and there. You've been to Griffin Claw, right? Yeah, it's actually right out. Uh, I've been to the Birmingham location, which is kind of out by where I work when we are at work, not work from home. Uh, it's a good little joint, actually. It's it's a super cool spot. They did a really nice job with it. Yeah, I, I went over there once, stopped by, had a couple beers. It was a cool little cool little spot. I saw yeah. they were um, they were working on their own bourbon, yeah, they, as well. Ooh. Yeah, they said it wasn't going to release until the spring, so that's probably sometime around now. But I don't know if they're, yeah. you know, with with what's going on. I don't know if it's still in the works or if it's actually out yet. But that's they also had cool. vodka. And I want to say they had something weird like scotch. I don't know. It was weird. But, yeah, yeah. The, pl- the place is really cool. I went there for one of the little tag brew tags that we do. And, yeah, good spot, good beer, had a couple. And had some crazy fries there, if I'm not mistaken. They do have really good food. They yeah. do have super good food. And they do a really good job of, like, the, the seasonal beers. So, like, you get around, like, fall, cr- like, Christmas time, whatever it is spring they do a really good job of like shifting out their uh i don't know their rotation but they always have like those ones that are oh yeah giving me a uh, a little bit of flack on that lattice episode there but yeah these things are quite dude deep. those suck they're the worst boys i was doing a little browsing what do we got Celsius from griffin claw no way and they're 16 ounce bo- or cans instead of the traditional 12 ounce ones. seltzers seltzers small are you ready we've been dude. 16 ounce toss. This will be the first one for the uh, for the entire series, I believe, for the 16 ouncer. I'm Don't ready. blow ready? it. Yeah. Absolute dime. Absolute. <laughs> <snack>. <laughs> Beauty. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, we've been killing a lot of seltzers lately. See America's Next Sweetheart or something over there? No. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> not I think all. that pitch and catch says otherwise. Nonetheless. Uh, but yeah, seltzers have been the play. Yeah, man. They're nice and light. Don't get me wrong, my loyalty, my, well, my loyalty. <laughs> you say wife stands with beer. Oh, beer all day. All right, I'm gonna read. Let's this. be honest. There's nothing. I mean, seltzers <laughs> kind of slap in the summertime, dude. It's warm they outside. They help you appreciate the beer. It's something just to mix it up. I'm gonna oh, read yeah. this little thing on the back of the can here. Uh, caramel and roasted malts give this ale its rich ruby red color. American aroma hops are added, leaving this ale on the malty side. Bronze medal winner at the GABF. Don't know what that is, Let's but it's like Beer Olympics, I'm assuming. Also, I have some pretty uh, pretty cool quotes on the back. Dude, In beer, small. there is freedom. Quote Benjamin Franklin. Ooh, hang on. Great American Beer Festival. Oh, dope, wow. dude. Dude, it smells really good. Pours real well, too. I know in, like, some previous episodes we've talked about how, like, some of the beers that we've had are, like, very fitting to the springtime. This is obviously a beer that you can drink anytime you want, but I could see this pairing just, like, super well with, like, fall. It's kind of got, like, that, like, late summer, early fall vibe, and you're just like, yes. This just screams 
football season. Yeah, dude, look at that nice day. dark burgundy top. Gets a little bit of copper on the bottom there. It's got a main head, too. Nice. I'm Solid. Interested. It doesn't... Intrigued. It's, like, pretty dark, too. I don't, I don't know the way to describe it. I'm excited to uh, give her a rip. Let's get a good set. So one, one big, underneath. Nice big underneath. Yeah, I'm getting good some drag. Decent. It Definitely. does. It's got like a very like sweet smell. Yeah, I'm getting a little nutty. Yeah, but it is sweet. Definitely. Yeah, maybe caramel. Bit, some earth, a little bit of earthy, malty. It is kind of has a mellower smell. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Carmel. It's not like very intense it's at all. Not, it's like it's you, when you smell it. I mean, you definitely get the whiff of it, but it's nothing in your face. It's actually just very subtle. Oh, dude, there's definitely some toffee in there. Oh yeah, she's a beauty. Got a strong. Yeah, I if that gives it some of its sweetness. So, in these things we were looking up earlier, they said to cup the beer over the top, move it around, and then immediately whiff, and it releases the aromas. Very the quick. It is a noticeable. Yeah, yeah wow, dude. It's on. actually crazy how much of a difference that makes. But uh, right. I'm done smelling this thing, boys. I want to taste Give it. Give her a sip. Cheers, Cheers, fellas. Cheers, Cheers up, boys. It's episode nine. Wow. That's so good. That is a delectable beer. I'm telling you, boys, hold it on the tongue, breathe out. Oh, my goodness. There's like just some, there's zest, there's sweet, there's, there's that hoppy, the hops that you expect to be there. It's, I'm still getting the toffee and caramel too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's very mm -hmm. sweet on the front end and crisp on the back end, I would yeah. say. Kind of pops off the tongue. Yeah. Yeah. Real nice. It's like there's just enough bitterness to yeah. have a little period at the end of the sentence. This is, that's exactly, I think during an IPA episode. It's all about balance. I think it was the train hopper one. We were talking about how sometimes beers, sometimes beer, you know, is overwhelming with the bitterness. Yeah. This, you don't even necessarily, you taste the bitterness, but it's not really there. It's like a perfect This done, is what bitterness over. should be doing. This yeah. is beautiful. It's, it's absolutely perfectly balanced, top I, to bottom. I'm telling you what, boys, the, the only downfall of this whole setup here, the beer, everything we got going on is the fact that we only get one apiece. Why'd you have to bring that up? I'm just saying, bro. I would love to be able to just sit here and be like, oh, yeah, I got another one. I can suck this boy down because, dude, this thing could go down quick. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no doubts there. So now I'm going to have to nurse it. But this is 6.5% mm. um, alcohol yeah. by volume. It's a good solid beer, like straight up. I like a beer that's got a little bit of like anything that gets above 5, I really enjoy. Because I'm like, you know, you sit there and you sip it. And you go, it gets after you a little bit. You know, you got to appreciate it. It's great. Yeah, no doubt there. I feel like this will be a nice, uh, even drinking experience throughout the beer. Yes. Kyle, you prefer having, I guess, if you're getting after it for an afternoon or something like that, while drinking responsibly, yeah. would you rather have a few beers that are higher ABV or would you rather stick with like a same lighter beer throughout the day? It really depends on if the few are going to make me feel full and bloated. And yeah, this one, I don't think it is. No, it's well balanced. I'm actually thinking of this might be super that well balanced. I, I keep getting. That was good. I'll, I'll talk when I'm done with it, but I would prefer to have something that is like a heavier beer, not something that's light, that has a lot of flavor, as long as I'm not feeling bloated, if I'm going to get after it, as you put it. Yeah, dude. responsibly get after it. And the best part about it is, like, you don't have to kill a bunch of them to, like, get there, you know? It'll get you to where you need to be, and it'll keep you there, and you won't have to take a leak every five minutes. Yeah. Like myself. So, perks. Perks. Yeah, dude, this is this is an awesome beer. Um, I see that it says 25 IBU, which I want to say is, like, the bitterness scale. What's that bitterness scale out of 100? That seems about right. I'm not sure. sure. Yeah, you're right. Because it's, it's not very bitter, but I can see if it's out of 125, it would make a lot of sense. Sounds about right. Yep. International bitterness unit scale. A gauge of a beer's bitterness. I guess it's actually measured as the parts per million of isohumalone found in a beer. Well, Let's that makes out. no sense oh, to me. Humalone? But... Maybe that's why it's uh, humalicious, mm. that one beer. And that's an incredibly bitter beer. Yeah, so this is those are chemical compounds that contribute to the bitter taste of beer and are in a class of compounds known as iso-alpha acids, so a little bit of acidity. 
found in hops. Nice. Is it found in anything other than hops? I can look. Because I feel like there's beers out there that have a bitter ending, but mm-hmm. aren't necessarily brewed Hobby. with hops. Sure. Because, yeah, that's, well, there's hops, there's malts, there's, uh, is barley or no? There's barley wine. Sure. Barley wine's kind of beer. I think barley was <laughs> kind of out of left field, but it popped in my head, so I said it. I've had a couple of barley wines before. What Not is too the, bad. I feel like there's another ingredient that beer's commonly brewed with that I'm missing. Wheat, rice. Well, yeah, for sure. But I'm like thinking more along the lines of, I guess, non-general I don't know, man. products. I don't yeah, know. never mind. I'm only finding it in hops, although I'm not going to say it's only in hops. That would make sense, though. So. I feel like I've seen a commercial for something. Like, like we brew it with barley too, and I'm like, nice. <laughs> yeah, I no, there's definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there are, but I feel like maybe those beers that I'm thinking are a little more bitter, are finished in like a bourbon barrel or some sort of cask barrel. Yeah, and it's probably getting that. Speaking just of from that, the, the high ABV, you know, Griffin Claw has a few of those, and they're really well done. Yeah, the bourbon barrel aged beers. Uh, I had a few. They don't, I think they only pour like six to eight ounces for them. Yeah, if that standard. Yeah, and uh, don't get me wrong. Like they are, they are true bourbon barrel beers. The ones that I've had, um, but they are really good. If you are an individual who appreciates those and likes to get that that effect of the bourbon, uh, like that. I don't know. It's almost like that sweet, smoky, almost kind of. I don't know. You probably could hit on that a little better than I, but I do enjoy them. Um, they definitely do a really good job with it. Are you taking me sometime soon? I don't know if I've been. Dude, yeah, you can go. We got a pipe. We got my parking pass, dude. We can park in Birmingham, dude. You don't got to pay for anything. Just Uber right on in. Perfect. Yeah, I think a bar night is very much needed at this point oh, in the game. Do. Don't even get me started, dude. Oh my god, it's been it's been too long. Simply too long. I mean, my bank account has definitely thanked me you as got, of late. You guys got any bar nights? <laughs> <laughs> got any of those? Uh, but i think there's something special about just hitting the bar with the boys man especially the the nights that you don't expect to go off the rail that they tend to do so like just like you guys want to get a few casual beers and you're just like yeah next thing you know rounds tequila shots whatever it is next thing you know you're just like we're at a club how'd we get here It's just that. What happened? You're just like Mr. Krabs in the club. You're just like, oh, what? <laughs> it's, it's absolutely brutal. But it's the best. And there's just something about the environment of the bar. Yeah. It's just great. You never know yeah, if man. you're going to have a conversation with an older gentleman that's just going to tell you some. Like, when we were up yeah. north, we ended up talking. Hey. <laughs> when we were up north, we stopped at a bar in a town called Sand Lake, I want to say. And we just sat there and talked with this dude. For like two hours. He's a cool dude. He was telling us about the cars he had in his past, you know, what he did f- during his life, some crazy, st- you know, Is like those. That's what I was here for? Yeah. Yeah. Dude. We were all up there. We were just sitting at the bar. Yeah. Shoot, of- literally just shooting the shit. And yeah, dude, he was like on a date. Yeah. No, <laughs> homeboy definitely was on a date, dude. He was, he was mobbing with the boys, reliving his glory days, and she was not happy, Bob. Not happy i'm pretty sure at one point the guy like referenced a previous girlfriend he was like yeah dude she was a looker and then he like looked at the girl he's with and he was like you're pretty good looking too (laughs) something like that (laughs) or i think he said like i'd choose you though (laughs) it was just like the most backpedal move dude it was she was drinking oh what was she drinking it threw me off fireball fireball and ginger ale i was like i was gonna say sex on the beach but no she was drinking fireball and ginger ale and i was like that Actually, doesn't sound bad. Sounds pretty good, that but like bad. I've never heard that before. But yeah, that that was a really good time. Twenty twenty has been wild, bro. Dude, it's been so wild that the U.S. government or the U.S. military, I believe, confirmed that they have footage of UFOs, and nobody's talking about it I at all. I was gonna say Sasquatch. I'd be like, what? They catch you running out of a porta potty somewhere? <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not wrong. No. Look, see what just happened? He's not even worried about the UFO. Yeah, <laughs> that's what that. I'm society. This is where we're at, folks. <laughs> I saw a meme about this not too, or actually it was today. It was on Twitter, and it was like, uh, it was like U.S. government 
is Mac from uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And he's like handing Dennis a plate of cereal or whatever breakfast. And it's like the, the plate of breakfast is UFO files. And then Dennis is society and he just whips it down the hallway. <laughs> it's a great episode. I was like, this is accurate. I remember seeing this and I was like, I don't remember caring. Yeah, but it's kind of crazy that in 2020, like our government confirms, I mean, it's not necess- necessarily a, you know, an alien, life an form. alien life form or something, but it's something that they, to the best of our government's knowledge, and we know a lot of stuff going on throughout the world because we kind of infiltrate other governments. Oh, yeah. And they're like, this is something way, way beyond anything we've ever seen or watched or tracked a lot of like anti-radar technology and it'll Dude, move 65 miles in like two seconds i'm telling you why society is not shocked because we've known about this shit forever and we're like we know it's a real thing and the government's just like nope and then they're finally just like all right it's a real thing and we're like yeah no shit you know what i think it is we just don't know how to care anymore because it's so back and forth all the time yeah we're just like is this a, is this a distraction so inter- trying to like? interestingly enough, I saw a video from, I want to say 1962, and it was people asking random citizens, probably walking down like the street of New York, whether they believe if alien aliens are real. And the majority of them answered like, well, to be honest, I don't know, and I really don't care. Yeah. And I feel like that still might be kind of the Well, when did Roswell vibe. happen? Was that the 50s? I have no idea. I think it was like mid fifties, like fifty six, fifty seven, Roswell, New Mexico. It's possible, yeah. Um, did you did you watch any of the Bob Lazar podcast oh, on yeah, Joe dude. Rogan? I'm not gonna lie, dude. I was big on the whole Area Fifty One scene for a minute. Yeah. Not, not during that whole like let's storm Area Fifty One, like as a kid and stuff. Like Area Fifty One was so just intriguing to me because one, I think like fighter jets and stuff like that are super cool and like yeah. the whole sr-71 blackbird and the u2 like those planes i would do a lot of like youtube videos on a lot of those were developed at area 51 so like i just kind of fell into a lot of those like conspiracy area 51 what's that it's called like black lake or uh black where, ledge no the lake bed that it's built on it's early it's like just south of some lake I can't remember the name, but anyway, like that whole territory and then the mountain ranges that surround it. There's so many like conspiracy theories encompassing that area of land that I was just like, this shit is cool as hell. Yeah. And the interesting thing is our government, the way our government sets up document release is a lot of it is just has like a 50 year. Yeah. Everything will be released after 50 years. And a lot of shit changes in 50 years. I feel like that, that stuff comes out every week and nobody really pays attention to it. Sure. They just kind of slip it in there. Yeah, it, it's not like they're making press releases <laughs> like today marks the day we release, you know, our nineteen seventy findings during, you know, about Soviet Russia and their UFO program Dude, or you I'm know sure whatever. There's it a is. lot of cool shit. Oh yeah, in those files, I'm sure a lot of it's still blacked out because it's like still. I'm sure there's a lot of red tape on certain things. Are like still top secret. Oh yeah, definitely. Just like the way the government works, they're just like. Eh. We'll put another fifty years on this one. <laughs> Could be, but yeah. But with the with the Lazar thing, do you think that dude's full of shit, or do you think he is pretty much telling his truth? I'll put it this way: the man has done so many interviews and so many like pieces on what he saw there and what he's done, and it's been so consistent. Now, I'm not saying that a pathological liar cannot display the same story over and over again, but the amount of times that he has said the same stuff, confirmed it the same way, no matter how many times people have tried to play devil's advocate to it, it's always the same. Yeah. He's th- very consistent. I think the, one, yes, incredibly true. He's he's incredibly consistent, and, and it's interesting. But the thing that I find crazy is there is traces of the government trying to erase his past. They've done that, it with multiple people. That part to me is the craziest because – there is confirmed that he worked at that Los Alamos laboratory. Yep. They have, like, physical copies of the newspaper from back in the 80s. They tried to wipe that off. And he, I guess he took people on a tour of the facility, and he knew where everything was. Yeah. Um, his schooling records were all gone. He was MIT. Like, yeah. It's, and it was it, erased. It's erased. But the thing is, it's not like 
you can work at a Los Alamos research laboratory without going to school. Like, literally, yeah. his record says he never went to school. Right. That doesn't happen. So, something fishy is going on there. I don't know, though, if I believe all the alien stuff about what he saw. I believe the propulsion system, kind of, but I don't believe he saw a body. I don't know. I think that... And whoever on the Rogan podcast, at least, the guy who made the documentary, I think his name was Jeremy Corbell. Yeah. He was there just... He, like, made it seem so much less legit than it would have been if it was just Lazar. Sure. He was, like, the hype, you know, the over-the-top, not entertainer, but promoter almost. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, Bob Lazar is not the most, like, entertaining person to sit there and listen to. He's not very, like, he's just very, he's very Bob Lazar. I thought Lazar was, I thought you said he was pretty entertaining. Like a storyteller. Did I mishear that? No, he like he has a lot of things to say, but like yeah. if you sit there and listen to him, he's just a very analytical person, so he doesn't have a lot of emotion behind what he says. So he's kind of like him himself, like he does not market himself well. Like he has put he's, his entire life savings into trying to prove the fact that there is certain research going on at Area fifty one and literally not many people know about it. Mm-hmm. He is a an entire facility of him doing like the same experiments that he did at Area 51 in his own private lab. The other and thing nobody is, talks about it. there was a specific um, element that he knew about. Like a physical element? Yeah, and they had it in super... It was only... They were only able to create it for like one-tenth of a second or something like that, and then it would vanish again. And Dark now... Dark matter or some shit? No. It was like, <laughs> ele- it was like element 115. Yeah, it's 115. Yeah? Oh, oh man. Click is that what it's called or does it have another name Sorry. no i think it was yeah there is another name but it was called element 115 and pretty much he the other thing that makes him seem super legit that he actually did work in area 51 is that he knew about this element 115 and was talking about it since the 80s and until like 2005 or 2006 then it was confirmed that that was a real thing Nice. And so for those like 25, 30 years, people were like, this guy's making shit up. Yeah. And now he's like, ha, ah, told you. Proved it. Yeah. No, Bob Lazar has a very interesting backstory. Um, still hard to prove whether or not it's all true. Uh, but, this I mean, is, nonetheless, yeah. we have verified facts that UFOs exist. Okay, hang on. That was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the thing is, if you watch that footage, and there was one, there's also one specific, like, U.S. Navy pilot who was, like, the cream of the crop, you know, was... He was, like, Top Gun, and there was another, like, training thing that he went through. Yeah, he was, he was literally, like, at the top of the command. Yeah. And they were over the Pacific Ocean, and he talked about this thing that was, like, a uh, Tic Tac pill, and that's what he called it. And this was in, like, the early 2000, 2003, 2004, I want to say. He said him and his men were flying around the Pacific, saw something on the radar, and he said it hovered, like, he saw it with his own eyes. He said it, like, hovered above the water for, like, 10 seconds, then jammed its radar, but it was still there. And then, like that, it showed up on the radar, like, 200 miles away. Yeah. And it's like, why would someone like that have the incentive to lie about it? I don't know. It's just so hard to be sure. Well, it's like, they, I think they released footage of that exact incident. And yeah. it's like, you can see, so like, they have like tracking, like, uh, it's like an infrared kind of deal. Radar. Thank you. Yeah. It shows it on the radar. And then all of a sudden everything just goes white, which I assume is when it was jammed. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, they track it, track it, track it. Tra- and then they find it over here and they all start going over the intercoms like, oh my, like, holy shit yeah. did you see that I, they're all like laughing about it like how insane it was like it was daunting yeah i feel like how would you guys respond in a situation like that i don't know how i would i would be like like oh my god people are gonna believe this stuff <laughs> yeah i would just i i don't know like i really have no idea how i'd react i'd like to think yeah. i would be like whoa that I'd was so scared but yeah i think <laughs> i honestly think i would be freaked be terrified yeah man no, I mean, I don't know how I'd react either. I've never had anything like that happen like, or else we'd be talking about it. Actually, I know exactly how I'd respond. I'd be like, the, the Russians. Russians. <laughs> like, not real. Going back inside. <laughs> Where's my beer? <laughs> He'd be like, am I drunk? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's crazy, though. It's interesting stuff. But yeah, I just I can't believe this story isn't bigger than it actually is. So, wh- well, let me, let me ask you this. Why do we think that... All this stuff is, they're just now, I mean, I get the whole 50-year thing, but, like, 
what incentive does the government have to actually like be like, yeah, so here's this, check it out? I think some conspiracy theorists are saying they want to deflect from the corona situation. Dude. And they're like, hey, I know things are pretty bad, but it could be worse. Alien invasion. Yeah. They're like, uh, we might be screwed. And everyone's just like, I just want to go to a bar right now, dude. Literally. It's actually kind of funny, but you're not wrong, dude. It does seem like a total... Maybe deflection. I mean, maybe it's just, like, to get people's attention away from coronavirus and on something else. Just, I don't know. Like, people say it's, like, a ploy. People say, like, could be just, like, we need something else to talk about. Yeah. I don't really know. Or it could just be the 50-year thing, and they didn't promote it until someone found it, brought it to the forefront, and then yeah. the government Who, Who's was been like, the big leader I'm, like, shooting that off? It's, like, it's not, like, a, it's not like a major... Tesla. <laughs> it's always Elon. Elon's just, what like, yes. Question? I'm uh, saying, like, who was the news network that really, like, put that out there? I remember seeing, it was, like, a red logo with, I don't know, it's, like, um, it's not, like, it's a like political news outlet, I don't think. HLN? Headline I don't know. News. Can't really remember, but, I mean, honestly, dude, you gotta think, with coronavirus and everything right now, it's not a bad thing to put out there, just to see if we can draw attention away from the coronavirus. Yeah, true. But, like, what do people care about? Although that's true, though, I think, I think we're on the, the back, ha- the back nine this corona thing i hope so man i mean i will say this we have promising data from other countries not so much the u.s we just hit a million confirmed cases which definitely sucks although our testing has been substantially far better yeah and we're actually reporting the numbers and there's also been an issue with people dying with covid in their system but and once again i believe covid is a very serious thing that's not what i'm getting at but one of the main criticisms of our numbers so far has been whether they die of COVID or die of something else they, not related to COVID. They're carrying COVID. And they're carrying COVID. They yeah. count that as a COVID death. Yeah. yeah see, That's been highly debated in the medical industry at the moment. Right. Which, I mean, I get it. makes sense that they're, they're obviously going to do an autopsy well, on the body and they're going to be like, well, okay, well, this person had COVID. But. What, what they're saying is right now, if a hospital claims it was a COVID death, yeah, they get, paid they get more. three times more of the money. Yeah. yeah. There's like incentives forward. for it, which is actually it's weird. I don't get how that works, but whatever. Uh, but what I was say, like, countries like Australia and New Zealand are seeing single number digits in terms of like new cases per day as of like, I think two days ago, which is really good. Like super happy that that's going on. And they're talking about like bringing the country back into like basically almost full year. Like, uh, New Zealand was even talking about being able to bring in tourists in certain isolated areas, like keeping them in a bubble almost. To some extent. I don't really know how that all works, but I was like, that's a bold move. Let's see how it pays off. Because, I mean, dude, their economy, I think, like, yeah. a huge portion of it's that's, off tourism. That's what I was about to say. I think places like New Zealand, you said the other one was Australia. Mm-hmm. I Don't quote me on this, but I'm sure that a large, like you said, large sector of their economy, their annual GDP is through tourism. So yeah, it's got to be, man. At some point, they're like, all right, this is hurting our economy way more than people realize so i don't blame them for trying to get it back open well i don't know about how they're testing everything but they have like seven times less deaths in their country than we have in our county here yeah one county of michigan they have seven so the numbers are 668 where we are 90 deaths in australia that's crazy look up the population of australia i feel like australia is pretty good too about like I mean, they have no reason to hide information like they that. Do, Aren't they, they do part have of the a, UN? Yeah, well, most yeah. countries are. 25 million about in Australia. 25 million people? People. The That's popula- it? The population of Michigan is like 24 million, right? No, it's like nine. Or LA's, LA's 24 million. It's like, what happened in Michigan? It's 9.98. Nailed yeah. it, dude. But yeah, so... The other thing is, though, crazy, Australia's though. government is far more restrictive than Americans. America's government is. In terms of, like, a lot of different things. Like like information and stuff? Being no, released? no, not information, but just their general polity has a higher propensity to So you think they've been a lot more strict, strict lockdown until yeah. now? If I had to take a guess, yeah. Also, yeah. they don't have as much as many imports and exports as we do. I was going to say, they're too. They're not moving flights like yeah. we are. And they're an island. Because you they're, Yeah, up, they're just kind of doing yeah. their own thing. But, massive, though. But like massive. I said, the Australian government 
as we've seen, I want to say it was in the 1995, in, in 1995, they were like, all right, guns are no longer allowed. Yeah. And Australians were like, okay. Sure. Um, but you brought up an interesting point earlier about, like, the the economic ramifications for these countries. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm not really sure about New Zealand, but I, I have to, like, Australia is not really known for their exports. Like, they, they definitely have a lot of land capacity, and I know they probably have mines for certain minerals. Um but I feel like tourism is definitely huge yeah. in terms of and their 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 GDP on year after year. And isn't New Zealand considered arguably the most beautiful place on earth? That's where all like the Lord yeah. of the Rings stuff was filmed. That's and, true. Yes, yeah. So was. I guarantee you. And New places. Zealand definitely. New Zealand doesn't have any big cities like Sydney. No. At least off the top of my head. Yeah. That, Sydney is Australia's a ma- ton of oh, like I huge know, ports dude. and coastal cities. I was going to say, Sydney is a major port city. Yeah, it is. Now that I think about it. So maybe they do import. They definitely don't import it and export as much as we do. But no. But I also think their imports exceed their exports. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Not that that's uncommon, but you know, Australia mm-hmm. actually looks like this is a complete side note. Australian citizens look at kangaroos as like rodents. Really? And it's like an issue. Well, yeah, they're like they're, they're like over- severely run. overpopulated. Yeah, they don't have any because they're protected. Apex, no, they did. They don't have any apex predators in Australia. Oh, I thought they were protected too. No, you can go. It's like considered a good thing to go kill. So it's like deer in the U.S. Yeah, a hundred percent. That's crazy. Kangaroos are badass though, dude. I watched Kangaroo Jack. Oh, okay, I know how they operate. They're just like, hey, you want to fight? <laughs> I'm just like, no. And they're like, too bad. <laughs> Nick's like, no. Drinks two beers. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I'm going to go fight a six-foot kangaroo. Are you kidding me? It'll be the worst day of my I'm life. Jack, dude. Kangaroo jacked. <laughs> Best. All right, just to cap that conversation off, they rank 20th in exports and 22nd in imports, so they seem to be moving some stuff. Really? What's their number one export, do you know? When I was looking through, it looks Kangaroos. like they do a lot of... It's got to um, be like some kind of fruit, maybe, coffee. or like uh, mineral, like gold, diamonds. Iron ores. Nice. Uh, coal, petroleum gases, and then gold. Really? Moving down the list. Yeah. Coal, I wouldn't have guessed, but that, okay, for yeah, sure. Neither. Makes sense. Interesting. Mineral rich nation. Yeah. I mean, dude, it's that a we huge have land mass. <laughs> that we haven't absolutely ravished yet. It's a huge land mass, no doubt about it. Yeah. You know what never fails to amaze me? That for an entire country, their imports, exports could be around 450 billion like that. And then somebody like Jeff Bezos has accumulated $150 billion personal wealth. Beast. Dude, the craziest thing is that his wealth was actually like $400 billion. What? Then he got divorced, and she secured the bag, bro. What did we learn here, boys? What did we learn here? Careful. Don't send really weird texts no. to some random hoe. Prenup. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure there was a prenup in place. But the other thing is, though, she was there from before the start. They had been together since, like, 1994 or something so like that. back when Jeff Bezos wasn't jacked? Yeah. Oh, so what's picture. up with that? The yeah. man's just like, yeah, now I'm rich. I inject bull testosterone into my veins, microdosing it for the last three years. Yeah. And if, dude, if I had a net worth of $300 billion, $350, $400 billion, you bet I'm getting as jacked as possible. Honestly, dude, I don't even think it's about being jacked. I think he's just kind of like, yeah, I'm kind of getting old, but I'm just hitting stride. So let's keep it together. Yeah, that's possible. And but, it just so happened that he's just like, yes, <laughs> check my veins out. But, dude, I'm pretty sure his ex-wife jumped to the third richest woman in the world immediately after that divorce. I think she was the richest woman. She surpassed Oprah. Oprah's got that bag, bro. Though. I'm pretty sure she's the richest woman in the world just because maybe, they got divorced. Maybe she was the richest woman in the world and the third richest person in the world. Could have been. On record. Dude, it was like stupid how much money she got. I think it was $168 billion. Which is insane. Dude, imagine just being like... Imagine okay. if she had one more billion. Okay, can we talk about... Can we please talk about how Jeff Bezos got caught? So he had a, an affair of sorts... But apparently it was really weird, and the text messages that got leaked were like him Worse saying... Worse than Brett Favre? <laughs> Brett Favre got that piece, though. He wasn't... <laughs> Brett Favre got that piece on him. What? What? Dude, that man, <laughs> that man sent... <laughs> that man sent a ballsy-ass pick <laughs> in just Crocs. You have to respect it for the fact that he had Crocs in. He was just wearing Crocs. New York Jets... This, the whole thing was weird. 
Oh, well, Sweet, let's just Jesus. cut this last like yeah. 25 seconds. Oh, we're but, leaving uh, it. <laughs> we are leaving <laughs> it. But anyways, oh, um, dude, the texts he sent were like, yeah, um, I, I just like, I want to feel your skin on mine. I want to feel an emotional connection with you. I want to, I want to see your, to see you. It wasn't even like sexual. It was the most asexual sex thing I've ever the, witnessed okay. in my entire life. Could you, what could you, you see if you'd like could find jeff be oh, no. jeff bezos cheating text kyle was, I, f- I, was, I don't even want no, you to look that no, up it was that's so, horrible no dude it was so weird it wasn't like scandalous at all it was the i i have no idea how to describe it it was so weird dude he's he's a skin to make guy he just all right to so contact. basically what i just learned is brett Favre took gunslinger to a whole new level and <laughs> jeff bezos is just like I just want to feel you. <laughs> is, is, is Jeff Bezos an alien? And he's just like, I need a human connection. Like, you, there was a glitch in the it. Did you say he was in Crocs? Brett Favre's dick pics. Were, he, was, <laughs> he was in Crocs. Tim's like, I've seen him. They're electric. <laughs> Dude, that happened in like 2010, 2009. He was on oh, the Jets. What a weird time. He had that one year stint. They went eight and eight. I remember being kind of worried. I definitely had a Justin Bieber haircut at that time. Didn't we all? Oh. <laughs> oh, you have ever Bieber haircut? Yeah. Middle school. Yeah, same. I was sitting there with my Bieber it. cut and my my uh my rumor from Sprint that slid up and the I was LG just like rumor. Brett Favre sends dick pics and Crocs. Bro. What? <laughs> rocking out with his Crocs out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, do you guys want these messages? I have them, but this is definitely a game time decision. Yeah, well, dude. dude, you might as well just drop them on us. Right. Who cares? Well, if, there, if there's something a little too over the top that I forgot about, but I just remember them being really weird. All right, I don't know if this is definitely it, but this is one that sounds very similar to what you said. It says Jeff, and it says, "I want to smell you. I want oh, to breathe you in. That's what it was. I want to hold you tight. I want to kiss your lips. I love you. I am in love with you. I love you, live girl. I will show you with my butt." Uh, uh. Yeah, we're going to end it right there. <laughs> Kyle, you got that voice for that shit, dude. You could, like, uh, read those, like, uh, what are those What are those books called? Like, erotica? <laughs> Kyle uh, could read erotica and have audio books. Fifty Shades of A. <laughs> Fifty Shades of A. <laughs> as, a as a quick, quick aside, can you believe Fifty Shades of Grey was that big of a phenomena? Bro, Absolutely. girls girls went Absolutely. from, like, Absolutely. I don't want to talk about sex to choke me. <laughs> They had to make those pages waterproof, bro, just to get those things off the shelf. Sweet. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> That's a T. That is a T. <laughs> One more in your audience. Who would have thought Kyle Small would have been the second person to get teed up? We could have teed him up for out. talking about Brett Favre's piece a moment out. ago, but we did it, and we dropped the ball on that. Duly noted. <laughs> Who would have thought um, I was the last one to get a T? That's, that is beyond me, bud. <laughs> It's Jesus. I, de- I definitely would have given Nick Hovey the favorite to be the first technical. <laughs> I was the first technical. I was proud of it, though. So. You were like a <laughs> minus 6,000 betting favorite for that. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, dude, Jeff Bezos, weird dude. He's I definitely, uh, I mean, uh, you got to be weird, man. You have that much money. What else do you do? You built an empire. You started off from selling what music and books. You have to give the guy props. He had a vision and he... Bro, he started off selling books, and he turned. he's the largest distributor of goods on the planet. Yeah, it's nuts. It's insane. Amazon's getting a little too big. Bro, we were talking about this. We were driving around the other day. Every time you're on the roads, you see an Amazon van. It's only a matter of time Always. before there's cameras on those vans, and they're just like surveillance. If you think they don't have cameras on them right now. Oh, dude, that's such that's scary, bro. But they're going to have like little units on top of 360 view. They're going to be like the next Google, like... Google, Google Maps, Maps cars, but they're going to just be surveilling everybody. All right. Do you guys ever see a Google Maps car and, like, flip it off? Flash yeah. your tits or something? <laughs> Tim's like, tits, check these boys out, truffle shuffle. <laughs> you know what? Oof. Yeah, so Jeff Bezos, weird dude, right? Uh, Crazy. I got to uh, imagine when you have whatever he's got now. I'm sure his assets are still worth. His wife's at 45, Bill. Both a billion. Jesus, dude. But didn't. Wasn't the the divorce for like one hundred and sixty? I'm sure their assets you know have recently assets dropped though? because of the entire stock no, market dude, right now. I bet Amazon's killing it right now. Oh, for sure. Well, right, but I'm sure there's been. Well, no, they definitely Amazon took a, a fall at the beginning, but I'm sure they bounced back. They probably made back up what they dropped. Yeah, because there was an initial drop right when everything hit could the you, fan. Sorry to be annoying, but could you please look up how much money she got in the settlement? 
I want to say it was over a hundred billion. Yeah, I thought it was too. I'm just telling you, Wikipedia says that her current net worth is forty five. Yeah, but I mean, a lot she, of it's yeah, probably she, in stock options. Yeah, and everything she got else. she got half of half of Amazon stock. That's correct. No, half there's of, no way she would half have... of his Amazon stock. Okay, so she doesn't have majority though. No. Well, she, yeah, was, there's no way she would get majority. So she's got thirty six billion in Amazon shares. That'd be nice. I'm just looking. Oh, I see what you're getting at. Fuck it, dude. At that point, I would just sell it and go live my life. Yeah. I wouldn't even care. What, like, literally, you're not going to run out of fucking money with $36 billion. You literally set up everything for the next however many generations. Dude, if I had $150 billion or shit, $36 billion, you would hear from me, but it would be few and far in between. Tim would write you letters. He wouldn't even have a phone. Oh, he'd be like, He'd be like, dear old friend. I would. It's I would, been no, ages you know since what? we've seen That's each other. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> I would, I would do that for like a month at a time, though. I would definitely just go do my own thing, go up north, and live, bro. However, I want to live. I'd get but, you wasted the moment we got. If like you wound up with all that money, I'd just get you wasted, watch you pass out, and I'd put a little tracking device in your back or something, so that way I could just like find you. I think <laughs> if, all right. Let's say I got thirty six billion dollars. Like in my a divorce, dogs. I'd give like my closest. 10 people all a billion dollars i really believe that yeah then you just made a lot of people upset because that went don't go care to, i thought it was top 10 i would be like look You're like clearly not i, I like that's no, tough i would, I would yeah. set we'll it see up, you later i would set it up where everyone doesn't get the lump sum of a billion dollars they just get consistent disbursements like one week? time a week yeah yeah no i would just no, give dude, them consistent sick. disbursements so like they're all good for life but it's not gonna like change who they are type money at once yeah. but if if like, and it's like we could all just be like doing shit i would definitely do kind of what kanye is doing in wyoming just buy a huge plot of land in montana yeah build a couple houses bunch of quads bunch of six car, sick cars bunch of jeeps and we would just we would just blow, blow shit up dude i was literally yeah. about to say the same thing it'd be so cool it would be so much fun dude and if we just have like there'd be like a lake and like some majestic eagles and like maybe a grizzly bear would just kind of no, come out of the woods and attack a deer eagles. get no. the actual eagles to play for no you. oh my gosh <gasps> oh dude fuck yeah that'd be sick just have the eagles consistently just another playing, tequila sunrise yeah dude the, life in the fast lane the bourbon <laughs> selection and the beer dude we would have a beer cave double the size of this basement dude the Minimally. entire yeah that'd be sweet just beer. just imp, just get like an entire truckload of beer like a sick home gym we could Bro, have like a little dude. baseball field for home run derbies if we want to test out what we got it'd be sick I don't skeet. know. Thinking about it. <laughs> right, Why not? You you hit a softball and then we skeet with it. Oh, dude, <laughs> that'd be sick. That'd be awesome. That would be super sick. Yeah, yeah dude. I so think, we need to make a lot of money. Yeah, you guys should definitely like and subscribe. So maybe <laughs> one day you could be a part of that top ten. Top five, top five, top five, top five, top five, top five. Remember that? What was that? It used to be it's like. Oh, it was like Metro PTS or whatever. Like Dwayne Wade used to be like, Yo, you're not my five list. You're like my top oh, friends. Yeah. Remember I that remember with like the Motorola Razor? It, yeah. it was, uh, well, I remember that, but the big one was MySpace's top eight. Oh, oh yeah. No. Yeah, MySpace had, if you were in the top eight. Bro, MySpace was wild, dude. People would just be like, it would like ask you your salary, and people would always be like, I make over $100,000, and you're just like some 13 year old kid. <laughs> He's just like, hey, balling. 13 year olds are out here. He's like, bro, I've been doing like digital marketing and stuff for like six years. <laughs> Dude, killing it i saw today actually on youtube some kid talking about who was 14 years old he was like yeah i made you know like eight hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars, hundred thousand dollars last year on youtube dude, what and i was just like Selling he, he, songs? Bro, he, just, he was just doing like daily vlog stuff dude wow. there's a kid that's literally eight nine years old that makes over a million dollars a year doing toy reviews no dude it's like 7.8 oh, right. million i just watched yeah, the it's top insanity dude, that dude is set for life and he he finished first last year and he finished first this year or t- two years ago and then last year just doing toy reviews yeah he's just like this little eight-year-old kid little kid his There's parents no are just idea. like oh my god so I get a lot of toys from this. Parents are like, yeah, you do. The number one grossing channel on YouTube. It's just wild. From, just from YouTube ad revenue alone, that's what he makes. Can't imagine what he makes for like a toy unboxing, you know, or something like that. How do you get a kid to do a toy review? I mean, I guess I just sit there and play with it. But like, he's like, he's thing, a Barbie dollhouse, and he's just like, that's dumb. <laughs> How does that work? I have no idea, dude. Dude, me as a kid, I just try and break shit. Like, 
Is that, is well, that's why you didn't make $8 million last year reviewing toys. That's why I should have made $8 million, because I'm like, is this shit durable? No, it's not. Do it. Try it again. And they're just like, we need to be better. That's possible. Let's, start, but, let's just start breaking shit. Like, you guys need to do better. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Kyle, what would you do if you had $150 billion? Nice property, lake in the back, nice boat. Small would take boat. He'd I'd take keep, over the world, dude. I would 100% keep my boat, though. Yeah, boat. Boats for sure. You know what else I would do? I would take you and we go car shopping. Nice. For my car. Hell yes. And, uh, <laughs> he goes for my <laughs> car? Yeah, for your car. I'd be all about it, though. I'd be like, dude, you can fuck. Oh, dude, I've actually thought about this before. This this is a true thing. If I ever, like, made it big, I would, and, like, Nick knew I made it big, I would pull up with, like, a 68 Mustang and just be like, dude, check out what I got today be like you want to drive it and then after it just toss him the keys and be like oh yeah it's yours dude if he ever pulled up in a 68 mustang first car right out of the gate i'd be like bro i know you, this isn't your favorite car what's going on here <laughs> i'd be like got a good deal on i'd it. be like where's your corvette or where's your chevelle or where's your camaro I would, big chevy dude, guy okay no i would definitely i think a mustang would be in the first three muscle old school muscle cars oh well buy. yeah for sure i think the first yeah i don't yeah, I'd get a Stingray Corvette. I know you're a big Corvette yeah. guy. I know you are. I know you are. Dude, if I had that money, first thing I'd buy. Everybody, I saw this thing not too recently. Sick, Jesus. Where it was like, if you buy your dream car before your dream house, you're a dumbass. And I was just kind of like, well, I no. feel attacked. Because the first thing I'm buying if I have a ton of money is a 1969 Ford Mustang. Like, out of the gate. If I have that much money, that is it. Also, I do believe that even if I had that much money, I just don't want a huge house. No. Nah. I want, no I want like, a decent... Don't get me wrong. I don't want to live in a cabin. That's no point. Have a couple a of nice six, houses. What if you yeah, have a exactly. house that looks like a cabin, but it's Oh, like, that, that would 100% happen. But I don't think I would ever go out and buy, like, one of these extravagant mansions in the no, Hollywood dude. Hills. Unless I had, like... Like you said, we were talking about, like, unless you had, like, a bunch of people to, like, live with you and something like that. That would be sick. Like, if you had the whole boys. squad living in a mansion, that'd be dope. Dude... But I don't know if I'd want to do that. I'd almost Not be like, lie, well, you guys are pissing me off. I think, it, I think it depends. Because I think we've seen that in Hollywood with like these YouTube houses and stuff. Like I know Jake Paul did the whole Team 10 mansion thing. But there was so much drama with it because everyone was trying to make it. Had in, like, everybody YouTube. had their ego. Yeah, but I think if, like, if, if it was yeah. just the boys and everyone was set for life... Be that fine, would be dude. there would be no drama. What 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 would there be drama about? We'd probably just sit there we and like shoot find, the shit and we'd like find some drama. Oh, I mean, obviously, but it would probably be ring. resolved within fifteen twenty minutes. Probably. Yeah. I don't think we're the kind of group though that would have like long standing drama. I think it would be like, yo, cut the shit. Yeah, we have moments, no. but I think we're good about just admitting when there's Bro, something. If yeah. you don't Probably. get on each other's nerves, you're not actually friends. Fair enough. Very true. Like, yeah. very true. Like, it takes friction to make fire, okay? And fire's the goal. You want to have some fire. Yeah. So, here, guys. gosh, boys, it's getting steamy. But I think the main reason why it's getting hot in here is because this beer is so damn good, dude. Boys, this beer slapped. I was a big fan. Griffin Claude really did a good job with this. God, it's so smooth. It just has a really nice balance of just, like, that really nice sweet taste, the and that kind of i don't know it just pops off the tongue man it really does yeah the uh the drinkability of this beer throughout this entire show was as smooth as the conversation i mean like it's just been awesome nice. very casual sipping uh not not too overpowering like i just feel in a good conversational state right now we only had one 16 ounce can and that's been absolutely perfect absolutely. yeah man absolutely. absolutely uh sits well on the stomach i was gonna say dude it's like Ow. It does not. It doesn't sit heavy at all. It's just like it's a really good complimentary beer. Like you get all the flavors you want out of it, and it doesn't just overwhelm your system. Like, I you feel good. I also feel like a lot of times with more flavorful, rich beers, at the very beginning, I get everything. You know, mm. like when it's really crisp, just cracked, super cold, and towards the end, I'm like, tapers it's off. Not, it's not watered down, yeah. but yeah, it tapers off. It almost yeah. tastes like it's watered down. Did not get that with this. Mm -hmm. No, it's like the first sip was as good as the last sip. Like mm -hmm. everything, top to bottom, I'm giving this a 100% must buy. And I think that says a lot about a beer. When like when you sit there sipping it, like obviously the temperature changes. So like you're sitting there holding the glass, whatever. Like initial sips are very nice and crisp because it's cold. And like as the beer kind of warms up a little bit while you're sitting there nursing it, like we did throughout the show, 
It's like sometimes some of these beers don't maintain their flavor. This one did a really good job of maintaining its profile. Mm. And that's something that I, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with because you can't say that for all beers. Especially, you know, like your domestics and some other ones. Oh, like, yeah. Like a lot of the times, stouts don't really handle it that well either. Mm. Um, actually, I think a lot of stouts get better. Like a lot of stouts are actually directed to be served at room temperature and stuff. But that's besides the point. Yeah, I yeah, mean, I feel that. So, like, I'm talking about, like, just bottom to top, overall, like, taste, really well done. As to what you were saying about it, like, kind of warming up as you drink it, can't relate. Got ice in my veins. Stays cold the whole way down. I hate you so much. But, on a real note, this beer, delicious, sweet up front, a little bit of bitter at the end, perfectly balanced. The flavor really does last. It is an experience to drink it. It is delicious. I want another one. Yeah, we're definitely... We're, yeah, this, like, is, this is going to be in the fridge for for the editing evenings. Yep. 100%. I, I told you, boys, the, the only downside was the fact we're only going to get one out of this one. Yeah. Uh, it's because it's sold in a four-pack. So, you know, if you're looking for it, I think we picked it up. I picked it up for eight... 49 or whatever it was and right. it's actually not a bad price point because you get the 16 ounce cans and you get the four pack it's definitely enough to get you get That's, you through whatever you're doing okay for bang for buck That's that is bad. a phenomenal price oh, point for this beer yeah. phenomenal like this is the best beer drinking experience i've had in a long time yeah no it's great beer man that i haven't experienced before should i say sure what's our uh, ratings I'm giving it a must buy. If you haven't tried the Griffin Claw El Rojo, go out. If you see it, pick it up. Because even if you don't want it right away, stick it in your fridge, let it chill, and then whenever you're just like, you know what, I could go for a new beer that I haven't had yet. Crack it open, have a good time. You won't be disappointed. Must buy. I'm also giving this a must buy. I think, Kyle, you're going to say El Rojo, Trace must buys. Go get it, people. Nice. Hell yeah. Hey, don't forget to like and subscribe to the Slightly Buzz podcast. Don't forget to leave comments. And uh, any, you know, questions, concerns, whatever it may be, leave them in the comments below. We're all about it. Yep. We're still taking beer reviews, right, or beer requests right now. So give us some. Give us something a little out of the ordinary. Yep. And uh, you guys have yourself a great weekend and uh, stay slightly buzzed. Yep. Keep a lookout for that uh, Cinco de Mayo episode. Coming soon. Yes, sir. Ay.